Flat Earth time with Mark Sargent, cause he's the Flat Earth guy. Yeah. Well, well the Earth might be he flat, but then again it could be freaking round. You don't know. We need or to talk to Mark box. Sargent. Come on, Sarge. Your your other Mark. number to. Hey, Mark, are you there? I am here. Oh, dude, we were just singing your theme song. Hey, what's going on, dude? Hey, hey, nothing. Uh, can. Is, it, is there still time to call me back on the other line? Absolutely. I dialed it twice, and it said that the, the user was not available. Oh, uh, no. That, well, yeah, that's because I, I hung up on you because I forgot it was you. Oh, well, hang okay. on a second. We're going to have to do some calculations with the curvature of the Earth. No, uh, shut up, Todd. We're going to call, we're gonna call <laughs> you back. Okay, get that line open. Okay. All right, buddy. I will, I will be ready. Right, right. Call you in a minute. Okay, bye. Okay. All right. Well, well, look at that. He had, I guess this, that other phone line must be that. special. Okay, put on our put on our theme music again. That was good. <laughs> do, 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 do. We're gonna call the flat Earth guy. His name is Mark Sargent, and he believes the Earth is flat. His name is Mark Sargent. <laughs> That's great. He's a flat Earth guy. This is Mark. Mark, are you there? I'm here. Awesome. We got you this time. Cool. What happened with that number? That's weird. Uh. It is a, a hard line that goes through Skype, oh. and so uh, so when Microsoft bought Skype, they they removed the personalized voicemail, which is the weirdest thing ever. It's like, why would you take that out? It was a, that's a standard functionality. But yeah, so that's exactly. why British, everyone has the same British woman. Okay, all and, right, and of course the government's monitoring. So. Well, you know, there's always that. There is that. So uh, let's just catch up really quick. This is Mark Sargent from Behind the Curve. But let's just forget about that. This is Mark Sargent, the guy from Flat Earth Clues, the YouTube channel that has bazillion viewers. A bazillion? A bazillion. Well, I don't know about that. Close to a bazillion. We're getting there. You're, we're getting there. We're helping you. Um, anyway, so uh, how was New Zealand? Good. It was, it was um, what, what should I say here? It was better than expected. I have never been to uh, New Zealand before in my life, and it was it is beautiful. If I ever have to run away from the United States, that is the place I will seek asylum. Really? It's just, <laughs> it's, it's just gorgeous. It is, it is beautiful countryside. It's like England, but with a lot better weather, with surfing beaches and just beautiful sun all the time and rolling beautiful hills. And, of course, you know, that's where they shot the entirety of Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah. So yeah. could was, was there. So I got a chance to go to Hobbiton and uh, visit the Shire, which was just a fascinating trip uh, because it, it's in the middle of a working 1,200-acre farm, and so it's this little, just this little village. It's you know straight out of the movie. There's no CGI there. Wow! Uh, and it was just it was just magical, just a wonderful so, trip. But, so, anyway, so, so while you were there, did you do the uh, you know the bubble thing that you like get inside of and and roll down the hill? No. No, the I didn't do any of that. I'm, I'm, There's a I, bubble I, thing. I, I, I wouldn't have recommended that anyway. Most oh, yeah, of, I think it, I think it's kind of cool though. Oh, is that like that? Uh, is that like that bubble thing that the uh, the flaming lips guy gets in and bounces through the audience? It's similar <laughs> to that. Okay. Yeah. Wow. There's, There's a thing you can do that. There's some cool places, but look, I'm older. I'm I'm probably not the best candidate to, to just like jump in a bubble and just start rolling around. <laughs> no, I, on, honestly, I wouldn't do it either. Man. Whatever. I'm scary. almost your age. I'd do it. <laughs> well, how old? Well, how old are you, Mister Sergeant? I am 138. No, no. no I'm uh, I am 51. Okay, cool, cool. Well, then you and Todd, you, Todd, you guys are the same age. Oh, okay. He's okay, so now it's 51. So he's two years older than I. <laughs> Wait, <you're, laughs> I thought you just turned 50. No. 49. I'm oh, my gosh. Todd's 49. Yeah. So, hey, I, I want to get into this really quick because... <laughs> um, and, we'll, and then we're going to get into the Flat Earth update. And I, I'm okay. sorry I don't have your theme song written yet. Um, my, that, compu that, right. my computer died. And uh, I hope to get it uh, get that all worked out uh, in the next couple of weeks. But uh, okay. I, I've noticed that you capture these interviews and then put them on your channel. Right. Which is cool. Th okay. and, and thank I, you. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not capturing this one, just so you know. Oh, damn it. Come on, man. I need you to capture this one because this one's important. <laughs> it is? Yeah, well, I'll send you the clip. How's that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Send me the clip. I, I will. I, and then I, you... can't, I try to capture what I can, but sometimes I, I could. In this case, I just didn't have time. Okay, okay that's all right. Well, I'll send you the clip, and then you can put it on your okay. channel because I'm speaking to the people that comment on your videos. 
Oh, okay. And, and I've noticed that the the people that comment on our particular conversations uh, automatically assume that we here at the record you need to know about are flat earthers because we're conversing with you about flat Earth, and they're very oh. they're, and they're a little hostile. Oh, because because they think you're you're in you're into it. Exactly, and I'm, and I, and I, and I, I, and I was telling Todd and Jason earlier that I was like, it, it bothers me a little bit because I'm not necess- and I told you this from the beginning. I'm right. f- flat leaning. I'm not there yet. I need to learn more, and you seem to be the authority on this, so I, that's why I'm talking with you, Mark. This is where you say, "Welcome to the club." <laughs> I get it. No, trust me. Uh, you know, it, remember, ninety percent of our members are still in the flat Earth closet, and I, I hear from them all the time. Uh, you know, where they F-E-C. say, "Look, I don't want to come out because of family members or coworkers or friends." Uh, you know, I, I get it. Well, see, you know, and I'm, and, not, I'm not even concerned about that. I'm just—it's just concerning to me that there are there are so many people that are so like the vitriol, like they're so against the idea of you even yeah. entertaining this as a as a reality. That yep. they just immediately go after uh, three guys on, sure a, on a radio show hostility. in Hot Springs, Arkansas. They just go after us like, yeah. like we're bad guys all of a sudden because we're talking to you, which that's a little it, offensive. It's extremely polarizing. I mean, you got to remember, for a lot of people, you're messing with their reality. You're you messing with, it, it, not to steal too much from the Matrix, but you really are. I mean, I had a guy on a call-in show, you know, and he was slightly older, and I was, I think, late 40s when, when he called, and he goes, he goes, how dare you, how dare you, young man, tell me the world isn't what I think it is. And it's like, really? Mm-hmm. It's like he didn't know me from Adam until my, my father worked for, the, you know, for NASA. You know, he built things. And it's like, you're telling him he is a liar? And, and I'm going, no, no, I'm saying he didn't know. You know, he, he didn't know anything. But, yeah, you're messing with people's reality. And it's they're, it's, it's, they're it's very, they're very, from, yeah, they're very, se- they're very sensitive about it. Yeah, it, it's yeah. kind of like telling somebody after they've turned 30 that they're adopted. <laughs> and, and you're serious. Well, you're yeah, serious. I can it, see that. It's like you're telling them that. Because people immediately, their first reaction, you know, the five stages of acceptance, which is uh, denial, anger, uh, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. That first denial stage is the huge. The People And falls almost immediately by anger. It's like, it's like, what are you talking about? It's like, I'm not adopted. And then you, you keep pushing it. They will start, you know, they'll get really, really upset. And to where, you know, when they, but it, the more they think about it, all, all of a sudden, they, you know, it doesn't even mean anything to them until they start believing just the slightest inkling of it. And then they revisit every conversation they ever had. Yeah. You know, yeah. With their parents when they, since they were six years old. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So, I trust me. The polarizing aspect, I get it. it Although, is. To, to, be, to be fair, most of the people that come at you are anonymous. That's the whole, you know, that's one of the rules of being a troll is that you remain anonymous. Sure. 99% of my emails are perfectly fine, and most of my phone calls are perfectly fine. Because, you know, they, yeah, they're angry, but they're not angry at me. They're angry at the idea. They're angry so, at the idea. Yeah, that makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. So, so anyway, to, to, to your YouTube commenters, if they are planning on commenting on this interview, uh, kiss my ass. <laughs> and lay off because we are just simply trying to learn. Our minds are open and we are listening and uh, don't make any assumptions about what we believe or um, where where we stand on the issue yeah. of flat or round earth. Just chill out, you bunch of losers. <laughs> Sorry, that, that's just me getting back. Well, I feel like I feel like I got new. I got new a couple of com- no, no, no. It, comment it, it, arguments, okay. and I was like, "You a hole, leave me alone." No, no. <laughs> I'm trying to listen to this guy, and you're, you're and you're stirring things up in a negative way. How can how <laughs> yeah. can we how can we progress with all this negativity? Stop with the bad comments. Stop putting us down because we're some hayseeds from Arkansas. It's actually not that hayseed if you've ever been here. We were a wonderfully so- sophisticated state. Um, but I, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I won't go that far. Well, but, no, I don't. I don't think the state has anything to do with it, though. I mean, people. Yeah, people can make what they you know jokes what they want. But look, every state picks on other states. If it's not Arkansas, it's Alabama. If it's not Alabama, it's Mississippi. Or well, Al, Al, Alabama screwed up, man. Let's just let's be honest. <laughs> see, see, there you go. <laughs> let's be honest. 
See, Everybody's got Alabama. Every, like, like every state I ever go to, uh, people complain about everyone who drives in that particular state. You know, they, they say, oh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty good state, but you be, be careful on the highways, man, because there's some nutty drivers out here. It's like, really? Because I hear that literally in every, every single state. So. <laughs> All right, so let's get to the Flat Earth update. What happened in New okay. Zealand? Did we get, did we, did, did we get anywhere? What, what did we learn? Oh, it, it, well, first off, it was wonderful. Uh, the people that put on the conference, you know, it, was, it was their first conference, and uh, it went very, very well. Uh, more people than expected showed up. We had a lot of last-minute people, and just about every media outlet uh, that you can think of. Um, hang on one second. I'm trying to do too many things at once here. That's okay. Uh, all, all just about every media outlet that you could think of showed up. Because remember, there's only wow. 4 million people in the entire country. Yeah. So all the, all the, 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 there's only three major television stations there, and... Um, uh, all of uh, uh, magazine periodicals. So I, I think I was interviewed by three television stations, three independent journalists, and three radio stations. Well, you're like a rock I mean, star because of the damn movie. I mean, you're all over the place, that right? Was it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're absolutely, you're absolutely right. That would the, the 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 documentary will not go away. It just keeps generating all this buzz. Sure. Uh, and, and it was and it was a lot of fun. And I was there for two weeks. The conference went on for a couple days, and we did functions before and afterwards. Uh, the lead organizer, Adrian. Uh, there's three. There's three conferences being put on this year that are being done by women, which I was really surprised. Cool. You know, because most of the conspiracy world is still men, uh, and so the one in New Zealand, the one in the UK. So and do you, well, okay, you brought up a, you brought up a word there that I want to I want to ask you about. You said conspiracy. Do what, you do you, do you think that flat earthing is a conspiracy or do you think it's a theory? Well, I mean, I'd love to call it just a theory but as you know because there is a little bit of a conspiracy aspect look the very definition of a conspiracy when three or more people conspire to cover something up to keep something a secret that's that's a conspiracy i mean if you went out with three of your buddies and dented your your other buddy's car and you all agreed not to tell him or just make up a story on how the dent got there uh then you know that's a conspiracy so mm, i don't know what else, you would, what else you would call it I mean, technically, yes, there are a lot of people involved in the covering up of this thing, but I don't consider it your standard garden variety uh, dark uh, conspiracy. Okay, I mean, uh, it's not like a, it's not like a wacky Alex Jones thing. It's a okay, okay. So it's, the the co- it's, 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 the co- the covering up is actually that the dome or whatever we're in a saline they. The powers that be just don't know exactly what that is, and they can't get out of it. Is that what you're saying? Right. I mean, if... if so that would if, shock people. Sort of like the alien life thing. Like, they don't want to let you know that there's aliens because that's too much information for the general public. They can't digest it. Well, there couldn't be aliens They'll because lose their mind get outside of the bubble. Yeah, well, here's the thing. When If you figured it out, let's say you were the United States and the Soviet Union back in 1960, and you didn't know what this place looked like until about 1960, and then you figured it out. And we, we, you, we've had this discussion a little bit before. Would you tell the general public? No, you would not. You would want to. Part of you would want to. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot of people out there listening to me going, oh, the people have a right to know. And yeah. Like, yeah. But uh, I'm going to steal a line from Men in Black, and that is, a person is smart, but people are dumb, panicky, and dangerous, and you know it. Okay. And that is, so what do you, you've got to figure out a way to introduce it to the public that is digestible enough. How long does that take? That takes decades to okay. figure it out. And, and that, by that, I mean, you've got, I mean, right now, we're in the perfect position to do it, which is why I think it's being allowed to go through. I mean, it, it, think of it this way, it between high-speed internet, social media, and six billion smartphones, we are now in the position to where you could roll out just about any story you wanted, and you you get just, you know the, the old criminal thing. Everybody get their story straight. Uh, everybody you could get everybody on the same <laughs> yeah. page. So and that's what we're that's what we're talking about here. So were there any new discoveries uh, at the flat Earth conference in New Zealand? Was it, were, were there any new tests done or? No, it wasn't really a, a testing thing. Look, these guys were just, just 
excited to do their first conference ever. So they flew in myself and uh, Robbie Davidson, and Patricia Steer went, and then the rest of the people came in again via technology. Did your girlfriend? Skype. Did your girlfriend roll up? My girlfriend? Yeah. Which which one? Yeah, you know which, which one? one? You know who that's, I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. All right, like, look, that it, cute, you know, cute little redhead lady. You're always on the on the yeah, YouTube. The, red, la- the redhead lady. You know, it's funny you'd mention that because when I was down there, I think at least half uh, out of the nine interviews I did, I think half of them asked about Patricia. I'm, I'm starting to wonder. I'm starting to wonder if people are more, more interested in in, in the uh, in the love the love triangle going on between you, Patricia, and Flat Earth right now than anything else. <laughs> uh, you they know, might be. The, 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 the movie had a lot of interesting aspects to it, and they decided to play up the romance side uh, more than I thought. But, I mean, it was amazing when I was talking to, like, radio stations, and, they, and they'd sit down, and they go, and they'd just stare at me, right? And they go, Mark, Mark Sargent, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we, I, we need to know. What about Patricia? <laughs> <laughs> and, and seriously, it's seriously like like absolutely not a, not a hint of humor in their voice. They're just it's like tell us, you know, we're rooting for you, Mark. Well, they're but, trying to do the Howard Stern it's a, thing, it's and it's it's, 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 it's bull crap. It's not working out for him. It's like, it's like look, I mean, Patricia and I know each other very well, and uh, but we realized, you know, we we at this point, flat Earth is so big and it's bigger than us that we don't want to screw up sort of a, a good team thing that we've got going on. I know it sounds kind of cheesy or No, weird, it's, it, makes, it makes sense. I get it. There is a certain production value between Patricia and I, and, and we've heard it too many times to where it's like, okay, let's say we start dating again. Uh, what happens if it just goes completely south, which it might? You know, what, what, what do we do? You know, yeah, what do we, well, like, I, well I can tell you what you do. You need to have a reality TV show that's like a bunch of flat earthers and y'all are all in a house, you know, just like the normal <laughs> thing, the thing that that's you see on TV all the time. Seriously, and we see what happens with you and Patricia right there. We, we have we have joked about that for the last two years. I which see. Is, uh, which is, there's so much drama already in the flat earth community between all the infighting, sure. and the weird jealousy things. Oh, and, no, no, and, and why? And why is that? Why would that even be happening? You would think everyone is just on the same level that they want to ach- accomplish the same thing, and that's to get the word out, or at least convince everyone that's been taught the yeah, earth is round so, to you're accept right. this other from idea. A, from a pseudo scientific point of view, you're absolutely right. We are all on the same page. However, people are people. We're just human. You know, that, that doesn't change. I mean, it doesn't matter what demographic. I mean, yeah, it helps a lot, and we are a lot more compatible than other groups. You know, at the end of the day, we, we still agree. It's like, okay, you know, we've still got our common goal. But look, you know, things happen between, you know, their egos clash. There's jealousy, there's rivalries, you know, like anything else, and, and I just Jeepers. scream every time I see it, because we're just wasting production value. Yeah. I, I, try to, I tell people, I go, save it for the television show. You don't need to do it right now, because, you know, it's like producers, they have no idea. I've told producers, I said, look, you, don't, you have no idea, you don't, have, you don't even have to write a script. This thing writes itself. It is, it's too easy. Anyway, go okay, ahead. Okay, so I want to ask you about, and I've tried this the last, we were going to do this last time, but we got sidetracked, but the the, right. the, the flight path question, that's that's a sure. big one. I mean, how do how do we explain this flight path scenario? It's if the, earth, if the, if the, the earth is, of- if the earth is flat. And, uh, and 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 let's just say it is. And let's say it is. The Earth is flat. Okay. How do okay. we explain how the flight path works? Because I've flown to uh, Germany, uh, 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 Denmark, um, Amsterdam. I've flown in and out of these countries many, many times. I've flown all over the United States many, many times. So how do we sort of explain that? How does that happen? How, how does that happen? How, how do we get around that? As far as the northern hemisphere flights, as far as with the direction they take? Yes. Well, for example, you flew to New Zealand, so how did that happen if the Earth is flat? Uh, can you explain, or did you just did fall you asleep? Fly, did you fly out of, like, West Coast? I would imagine yeah. so, Seattle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, not, there's, no, there's no nonstop from Seattle. So, But I flew from, on the way out, I flew, flew out of San Francisco, and on the way back, I went to Los Angeles. Okay. So it might as well be, it's West Coast. So you flew out of San Francisco to 
Straight to Auckland. Straight to Auckland. Okay. And so what, what was that flight like? Because I remember flying over Greenland, uh, coming back from Germany one time. Uh, you know, I remember seeing all that stuff and being like, whoa, crazy. Oh, well, in the Northern Hemisphere, yeah. The, nothing Actually, the Northern Hemisphere tends to work out just fine. It's the Southern, the, where the flights really are, are weird. And in that, I talked about this in the clues, which was anything that goes from the Southern Hemisphere to the Southern Hemisphere. So going from the north to the south, not that bad. Uh, I mean, ex- with the exception of distances. Meaning, so, but, 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 uh, but, but wait, but how do we explain that flight path thing? Because if you're flying over, you know, if you're flying and in, 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 if, if it is curved, you're, right. you're making that route, you know, it, 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 it would seem that the, the Earth would be round. Yeah, but there wouldn't... Right or how do they? How do right? if it's surrounded? How, if the whole disc is surrounded, if it's by surrounded, ice. yeah. Then are we going? Are they? Are they intentionally like going out and over and around? Well, do you understand it, what I'm saying? You no, know, I, I do, I do. That's just it. I don't know exactly what, how that's working. I mean, you got to remember, like if you're looking at the AE map, for example, uh, and I'm looking at, I'm staring at right now. If you're going from the west coast of the United States to New Zealand, that's not bad. That's just a straight shot to New Zealand. We, and as far as the northern hemisphere flights, even those, anything within, like, inside the equator, and I say inside because the equator would be the inner marker, and then everything outside of the equator would be the outer marker. Where it gets weird, and, and we still have explanation problems when it comes to this, when you're flying anywhere from South America to Africa to Australia, in, anywhere in the south, how those get there. They take, you know, weird, super weird connections, but the connections still have problems when it comes to how long the flight takes. Because I've had people that have said, oh, yeah, I've flown from Buenos Aires to Sydney or, or Santiago, Chile to somewhere in Australia, and it takes this amount of time. Well, in a flat Earth map, it should take a few hours longer. So how, is there a perspective issue with the map that we don't know about it? Maybe. Don't know. So, does really the, f- so the flat Earth map has an equator? Sure. What is the equator? What is the equator on the, the flat the Earth? The equator is in the same in the same place as it would be on a globe. The only difference is that if the equator in this case isn't the uh, how to explain this. So if you're looking at, you're going to have to have a, an AE map up in front of you uh, to, to to do this. Imagine if you took, I can pull one up. Uh, uh, okay, if you imagine if you took a globe and you put your hand on the North Pole and just flattened it, right? So the North Pole is at the center of the map. Yeah. Well, the equator is still technically there on the map. It's just a circle that is kind of in the middle of the map. And then, so everything outside of that there circle you go, would, see. Be, would, be the, um, would be the outer marker. Would Got be it. The, what, what we know is the southern hemisphere. Everything inside the circle would be the northern hemisphere. I've got which, an course, azimuthal equidistant projection uh, uh, Im- yep, Im- yep, image yep. up right now. So I see the equator, sort of this red line. Yep. It slices through... And right. so, and so this this so you're this is a flat Earth in, map in a round kind of path. Yeah, but not but it's yeah, just not, not a curve, not, not globally. You yeah, see. and you got to remember it's so uh, it's so hard to explain sometimes over radio. What if people say, well, if you fly around the globe, uh, how do you do that on a flat map? And I go, well, you take a finger, you take your finger, well, my red circle, for example, and you follow sure. that. That red circle, technically, you circumnavigated it. Now, yeah. is that different from the globe? Yes, because on a globe, supposedly, you're only flying forward. You're not making this gradual left-hand turn or gradual right-hand turn. Sure. That would be the big difference. But technically, you have circumnavigated it. And circumnavigating that flat Earth map, does that make it a sphere, ball, globe? No. No, it does not. And you do get to go all the way back to where you started. And the GPS system will take you in that direction as well. It's very clever. So uh, really, the, the 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 question here is that it's it's the South Pole that's the uh, the tricky South part. South Pole is completely screwed up. Oh yeah, South Pole is not even. Okay. I mean, you got to remember, you're you're looking that big white mass on the outside of that thing. Yeah, that's Antarctica. Okay. So Antarctica is nowhere even. It's the only continent that absolutely does not make sense to any. That's the part that that throws people. Because and so, like, and, well, and so, why haven't we? Why haven't we explored beyond that? Uh, that 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 ice ring. If, if this azimuthal equidistance map is actually right. what we're looking at and what we're living right. on, 
Why have we not explored beyond that? No, we have. Well, we've tried anyway. I mean, the United States government tried literally for the last 50 years. That was that was the whole point of the Antarctic Treaty, which okay. was Admiral Byrd. All right, story goes that Admiral Byrd in 1926 went to the North Pole of this map, and whatever he found up there convinced them it's like, okay, the world isn't what we think it is. And so they sent him and the United States Navy out to the outer rim and had him flying around for the better part of 30 years. And then... Once that is you this know, documented? Is, is this documented? We know this. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, he he's, he's absolutely yes, absolutely. Okay. Admiral Burt's missions were not were not uh, secret at the time. Only that he was down there doing navy stuff, and he was flying around, flying around, and then he, every every so often he'd go on the news and and do book tours or whatever, and say, oh yeah, we're trying to discover it. But they didn't, t- didn't obviously they weren't telling the press. It's like, oh yeah, by the way, we're looking for the edge of the world. And then in 1954, he goes on a television show called The Long Jeans Chronoscope, and he says that the next mission, Operation Deep Freeze, 1955-1956, is going to be super important, and he's worried there's a lot of countries down there. He's afraid we're going to start fighting over Antarctica for no apparent reason other than that it has massive amounts of resources. And then right after that next mission, that's when the Antarctic Treaty started to be put into place, and it was ratified in 1959, and that was it. Nobody ever went there again. Okay, well, wait a second. Okay, so this is Admiral Byrd. Correct? Go ahead, Todd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Admiral Byrd also flew into a uh, dormant volcano. Correct. Were we talking about the 1926 journey to the center of the Earth story? Yeah, yeah, where he met That's the right. benevolent one and uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, a yes. few different okay, people. So there is which I know. which fascinated me more than any of the rest of this. I mean, because I, I was looking at the Earth like the Swiss flower. cheese. That's how I got into Flat Earth, was looking at that story. I was a Hollow Earth guy. What you're talking about is the famous Hollow Earth Earth story from 1926, where he's the first man to fly up there to the north. And he supposedly finds this entrance, you know, literally straight out of Journey to the Center of the Earth movie stuff. And he goes in, and there's, you you know, giant dinosaurs and human beings, and the place is massive. And But it isn't a completely hollow Earth, you know, that's... 4,000 yeah. miles to the center type thing. Right. And, but right afterwards, that's, this is where it gets strange. And you would have to agree with this, too. And that is, you'd think that if, if you discover something that's straight out of a science fiction novel at the North Pole, you'd think that's where you'd be concentrating your time. Yeah. Nah. They immediately said, no, no, no. Night, you know, immediate, your next mission, you're going out. You're going out to the, the outer reaches. And that's literally where he spent the rest of his life. He flew nonstop missions in Antarctica for 30 years and only took a break during World War II uh, because of, of World War II, which is a whole other side story, which is every other country left Antarctica during World War II except for one. Can Interesting. Get, except for two. Get, World War II. Yeah, except for, except for two. No, no, it's except still... for one, one nation. One nation stayed down there during World War II. Okay. Well, okay. well I, I was going to say there are two now that, like, pretty much hold No, 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 no. You, you're, to... you're overthinking it. So who uh, think, think Indiana Jones. Who would have cared most about the, 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 the magical, metaphysical stuff of Antarctica? Right. The, not the Nazis. Right. Have you watched the documentary, the Werner Herzog documentary, uh, Journeys to the End of the World? I don't think I have. Oh, you need to check it out. Is it good? Yeah, yeah it's 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 it all happens in Antarctica. He goes down there and stays with the uh, the people that live and work there for six months. Oh wow! It's very it's it's a very well it's it's Werner Herzog, so it's got to oh, be yeah. great, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But and yeah. I, I'm 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 a fan of some of his stuff. Oh, you should uh, be a fan of all of his stuff. So, yes, so it's a it's a really good documentary. My, but go my, ahead, Todd. My take on the Arctic. Arctic versus Antarctic sure. is uh, it was is more that not not so much the flat Earth piece as far as why Admiral Byrd found that location to fly into that volcano. It has to do more with the axis tilt and oh. processional movement. Hmm. I mean that's right. that was my take after reading this information about Admiral Byrd and his expeditions. 
I don't know a lot about Admiral Bur- Bird, but I like. But it. I mean, I like you're saying, cool, Todd. Though. I mean, teach see, me, teach see, me, teach me more. I'm a learner. I want to learn. Mark knows. Yeah, yeah. he does. Well, he knows this. Ad- Admiral Bird was. I mean, he's well. Even his death was mysterious. Where he got himself into trouble, and you can watch this. It's it's public information. You can you can watch the uh, story when he went on the Long Jeans Chronoscope, where he was talking he was almost giving away too much he was too good on camera he was too comfortable on camera you know for being a, a, the youngest admiral in the history of the united states navy you know he made admiral at 41 you would think that he would be more discreet on on some of the things he was talking about and he gave up almost immediately that oh yeah there's uranium down there and it's like what you, you know this is when uranium uranium was. yeah i know the most expensive thing ever back in the 1950s you yeah know, sure art Hard to come by, and he was he was like, and then he's like on it's camera saying, still... "Yeah, I probably shouldn't have said that." It's like, oh, dude, what are you doing? Because and so he died uh, shortly after uh, Operation Deep Freeze. He comes back home and he supposedly dies of a heart attack back in his Boston home in, in uh, 1957. And it's like, you know, if you looked at this guy, it's like, no, he would have lived to a hundred. He, he, you know, he flew his own missions. He was a rail. He was he was military the entire way you could tell this and he did cold weather missions he was hardy so but he was an interesting guy and i do i think he found the the outer barrier the outer markers yeah yeah you, really you do you do you do i do 100 percent. okay because because of the moves they made afterwards see i don't, don't remember do. that part where he found that barrier I well, it's because they don't talk about it. That's okay. why. Okay. No, 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 no. Meaning, meaning, he goes out there. He's looking. He's flying around, flying around for no apparent reason, just flying around Antarctica for years and years, flying his own planes, and then finally during Operation Deep Freeze, that's when the missions end. I mean, he goes on television just before he goes on this mission. And says, "Oh yeah, we're going to be down there for a hundred years, battling over this this territory." Wow. And then the very next mission, they they. Everyone freaks out, and they get off the ice at the same time like it was on fire, which is weird. And they, they put the Antarctic Treaty in place and says, oh, yeah, by the way, nobody gets to go down there ever, 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 uh, except for the military and some military scientists. No corporation from any country can set up shop there, ever. Well, um, so you know, it's... Mark, I, where I have to agree with you on that one is that it is pretty well known that that is one of the most restricted areas in the in the world. Right. Right, it is, and so why? Well, I, I think the, the contr- Antarctic Treaty is the only treaty that's ever that's never been broken. It's never been uh, even breached, or uh, it's never even been discussed. That's the part that threw me. That's when I called BS. When I said, "Okay, you know," interesting, United, very interesting. United, United Kingdom after World War II needed the resources. The Soviet Union needed the resources. China, they'll take any resources they can get, and yet none of these countries are even allowed to protest. The treaty. You're not even allowed to run a full page ad in your newspaper and say how great it would be for British Petroleum to set up shop down there. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> what what conspiracy is bigger than money? I mean, if I ran British Petroleum, I would run a full page ad every month. Speaking no, speak, speak, speaking of money, m- m- Mr. Sergeant Mark, yes. I've got a proposal for you. Okay. A proposition, if you will. Oh boy. I, as I, it I, were. I think this is fun, and I think that you might like it. And I I have a I have a I have a gut feeling. And a lot of times, and my my, my my buddies over here can 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 attest to this. My gut okay. feel my gut feeling is on 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 point. Here's 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 what I'm thinking. What? Check, feel me out. Here or at least hear me out. Don't feel me out. I don't, I don't want you I'm to. to say, I don't, I I don't want you to touch me ever. Do, <laughs> never touch me. Uh, well, I, I, if I do meet you in person one day, which I hope I will, I do want to shake your hand and give you a big hug. But yes, got it. I will. I will not feel you out then. Thank you. <laughs> so we want to um, we want to start a GoFundMe. Okay. And we want to send you to the moon on Jeff Bezos on Jeff Bezos new uh, uh, moon that... moon Moonlander uh, Blue Origin. What do you think about that? Or will well, you okay. will I... you allow us to create this GoFundMe uh, using uh, your likeness in video? Uh, on on and, and and believe me, all with all due respect, we will do this with all due respect, oh, it, of course. completely. But we would love to send you to the moon on Jeff Bezos' uh, famous new spaceship, Blue yeah. Origin. What do you think? I would, of course, I would love to. Uh, however, and I'm going to use one of your um, colloquialisms. Go ahead. Uh, which that 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 dog probably won't hunt. 
I don't think I, I, I don't think I've ever said that in my life. But go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I have. Uh, it's it's southern. That's what he said. Uh, oh, I get, well, I get uh, it. Uh, well, I, I've heard it before. That dog yeah. won't hunt. I, I saw the story where Jeff Be- Bezos came out with it. I think it's the, the company's Blue Origin or something like that. Yeah, uh, Blue Origin. One, yeah, one of the SpaceX competitors and one of the NASA competitors, however you want to look at it. And uh, it was a lovely prop uh, thing that he put up there, saying that, <laughs> oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're thinking of going back in five years. But So we're going to reach was, we're gonna reach out to Jeff. We're going to put together a GoFundMe. Uh, and again, if you give us permission to use your likeness sure. from your Bad video idea. clips, yeah, 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 uh, we're going to put together a GoFundMe, and we're going to send you to the damn moon. I'd love, I'd love to. Do you I'd think? Do you, do you think that you will get there? No, of course I won't get there. Where are you going to go? No, they, where are you Where are you going to go? Let's Let's just say hypothetically this happens. Yeah, seriously. let's say hypothetically we get ten thousand dollars. That's all we need. No, we, is we, it? Is it just ten? No, we need less than that. It's not that much. Seriously? But I want ten just so that he has like all the cool stuff. I want Mark to have all the cool stuff, like the VIP meals. I thought it was like a hundred k at least. No, really? Is it that much? No, it, ha- it has to be. It has to be that. Probably much. more than that, guys. Okay, yeah. well we can, we, we'll, we'll, hey. we'll, we'll 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 raise it. Damn it, let's, we're gonna make it happen. Let's say we do this. I'm a I'm a go getter. Do this. You've got to understand the logistics. No person ever since nineteen ever since nineteen seventy two has ever left Earth orbit ever. Ever. It's never happened. Okay. Okay. It so never, it's never happened. Like you, you really honestly think the moon landing is fake? Oh, absolutely, one hundred percent, without a shadow of a doubt. I could, I could destroy the moon landing in less than sixty seconds. So, I mean, so let's, let's okay let's, in let's, less than sixty seconds, destroy the moon landing. Go. Okay. Look up any image. Uh, let's just go. I'll do the one off, off the top of my head. Apollo twelve. First things you would notice: this static image. Forget about the moving pictures. Uh, all the shadows intersect. That can't happen with um, one light source, which would be the sun. Remember, they didn't bring secondary light sources to the moon. Second would be no blast crater, no splay pattern whatsoever. This thing touched down with a 10,000 foot, foot, foot 30 seconds pressure, and there was, no, there was nothing disturbed at all. Not a single ounce of ash anywhere was disturbed. Uh, no feats of strength. White man can jump on the moon, supposedly. 180-pound man would weigh 30 pounds on the moon, and these guys were athletic. They had no leaping ability, no feats of strength. They should have been able to pick up the moon buggy on top of that. Uh, what's the moon buggy doing there uh, at all? There's just no <laughs> way a battery power from that moon buggy should do anything, especially in the severe temperatures. And last but not least, uh, the VHF transmitter has a range. That VHF 60 seconds, time up. At 50 miles. <laughs> Not two hundred fifty thousand miles, and they had ten. And they had, they had sixty seconds. Times up. Times up. <laughs> Times up. Sixty <laughs> seconds. <laughs> wow, that's a lot to digest there. Oh, I hate the moon landing. It's terrible. Okay, it's, well, it's, it's I, can we get into that next week? Okay, so so let's say I want to say I we get raise, into that next we week. We raise the money. Okay, right? wh- wh- can we raise and, the money? And. They take him off wherever, and they say they're taking him to the moon. Yep. Are you going to, like, if it's fake, are you going to publicly expose it? Like, say, dude, they took me over here to Arizona. We were <laughs> yeah, a, I went to some sound we stage hangar. with Stanley Kubrick. Oh, yeah, they, they'd allow that to happen. No, I know right. you're going to sign some stuff. Just put down a no, fake name. No. What, if the, but, but what, if, what if you just went rogue and you were like, okay, I'm going to sign these contracts, but screw them. I'm going to tell you anyway. They'd have a... They'd have a um, a station delay on that. There's no way. There's, we don't. We don't have a station delay here at our community radio station here in Hot Springs. I promise you. Well, that. I'm saying if you if you broadcast any, you got to remember that just the Apollo missions were broadcast off of second generation screens. They wouldn't even allow the major networks to have live feeds. They had the networks come in and had literally had them film off a projection screen, which is at the end of the hall, and the networks were furious. And that was the that was the moon mission. Interesting. So, Very yeah. interesting. So, okay. Just so you know, though, I'm optimistic about your, your venture here. I don't think it's the money that would convince them. I think if you badgered them enough and had enough social media people badger them, they might say, oh, yeah, let's let's talk about Mark going to the moon. Sure, I'd love to go. I, I wouldn't turn it down. I wouldn't even waver. Be like, yeah, of course I'll go. Uh, would they let me go? Would they would they allow me to remain alive? I, you know me. I, I never got married or had kids. Uh, <laughs> So you'll, uh, you'll, you'll survive. I bet I would. 
You'll survive. All right. Well, this has been a fantastic conversation, Mark. It's good to catch up. It's been a couple of weeks. Yeah, I, yeah I'm sorry. I, I, w- I wish I could have talked to you in New Zealand, but, you know, we had that 16-hour uh, time difference. Yeah, that was that was bizarre. We gave it a shot, and you were busy. I get it. No big deal. Um, we got you back, though. We got you back, and we're very excited to continue this conversation. So maybe next week we can explore the moon landing stuff a little more because that sounds deep. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I, it's I, pretty I, deep. You absolutely blew my mind just now in 60 seconds. So I want to right. learn more. I okay. want to learn more. All right, Mark? Cool. All right, guys. Thanks again for taking our call. We really appreciate it. And I promise as soon as I get my computer fixed, we're going to have a flat earth update bumper that's going to like introduce you every week. Oh, awesome. It's going to be I, spectacular. You want, me, you want me to put this up on my, on my channel? Just send me the audio, please. I will. I will. I'll do that. Okay. All right, brother. All Thanks. Right. Love Thanks, you, man. Guys. Have a good okay. ha- have a good night. Later, man. All right, you too. Bye. All right, there he goes, the Sarge. Dang, we did it again. <laughs> we got him on. <laughs> I'm so excited! I love it! I love it! I love it, Todd! I love it! I love it! How many years have I been telling you I want to get a flat earth from the show, and we got the freaking guy. He's the guy. Settle down, Aaron. Settle down. Damn it. Ha, ha, ha.